Hey guys, let's talk about CAT strategy. How do you exactly go about any CAT paper, for that matter? So we have basically three sections: one, two, and three. That is obviously all of you are aware now. Section one, two, and three. Now I'm going to precisely talk about section three, which is quant today. Uh, let's look at it. I've always been telling you in any section, your first priority you should solve the section in two rounds. Okay, the first priority must be one-liners. All right, in the first round you must solve the one-liners first. and then go for in the next round if you don't have many one liners big deal ideal time you should spend on the first round is around 10 to 12 minutes in some paper like cat where you have 60 minutes to spend you should uh, spend 10 to 12 minutes i've already spoken about this in my previous video as well uh you should spend 10 to 12 minutes and solve at least four questions or something you will have four one liners for sure i'll, I'll show it to you uh let's go ahead uh, in the second round you solve only your strong areas okay and if you have some time left after that because the strong areas must be at least 6 to 7 out of the 12 13 chapters that you have so strong areas i'm sure you have all of you have 6 to 7 strong areas like probably arithmetic can be a strong area for someone geometry can be a strong area for someone numbers can be a strong area okay you go for strong areas and uh, slightly uh, strong areas as in don't don't ever touch your weak areas okay slightly slightly strong areas all right so this would again probably take you know if I, when i show it to you exactly what i'm doing here uh, you'll get to know this will probably take around uh, let's say if, if you consume all the time remaining time 48 minutes okay this should at least give you around 13 to 14 questions that will make you a comfortable 18 questions correct if your accuracy is 100% you'll get all 18 correct that is 54 marks that is good enough for score okay uh, but obviously we'll try to maximize the score in the in the next couple of days i'll explain you how do you maximize your score uh, estimated cutoffs as per percentile i'll say uh, around 14 to 15 questions in quant would get you a 90 plus percentile and around uh, let's say 16 to 18 would get you a uh, 95 plus and uh, 21 would be the safest score okay usually in any entrance uh, you you usually solve from 1/3 uh, to half and because cat has been always very unpredictable okay uh, usually it goes for half last till last year it was like more than half in fact four fifths okay uh, a lot of students had all 80% questions out of 32 and then they got 99.3 or whatever uh, but this time they are predicting that will be more on concepts and less on theoretical and calculation intensive int intensive questions so i'd suggest around uh, out of 32 around 18 to 21 which is around uh, 40% or uh, sorry not 40% uh, 50 60% around questions should be perfectly safe okay in section 1 All right, so this can get you a call if you're a non-engine, if you're an engineer and a male, <laughs> this will definitely get you a call. Okay, uh, yeah, if you're a non-engineer, you probably can relax your score to around 16 to 18. That should be great enough. Okay, yeah, let's talk. So I, what I'm planning here is right now I'm going to show you yesterday's IFT paper, and I'll show you how do you exactly go about this. Okay, you may keep a check on the time, and I'll start my rounds right now. Okay, now section one. So as I move in the paper, uh, I know that. quickly i'll scroll through i know that there are 22 questions in this so that's 22 questions in quant uh since it's ift ift's cut off usually is around 1/3 which means around 7 to 8 questions would be safe okay so let's see the first round okay now definitely you will not read such questions okay uh, in the first round you'll not even touch you'll not even think of reading these questions all right so let's go for second one it's a one liner like hardly like two sentences rohit was thrice as old as her brother okay three times as old as one information we have Uh, in 2014, she was only six. Uh, she was only six years older than her brother. Six years older than her brother, which means Rohit and her brother have a gap of six years. That will always remain six years. So, when she was thrice as old, the brother must be, let's say, if brother is two, she's six. But that's not working. Working. So obviously, brother is three and she's nine. That works because the difference is six. Perfectly fine. Which means in 2004, she was nine years old. Which means she was born in 1995. so that precisely gives you a straightforward like in 30 second question you know next question so definitely i'll solve the second one as well p q r are 3 unequal numbers p q r are an ap p r minus q okay let on p q r are an ap and p r minus q which means subtraction of these two and q minus p subtraction of this two is in gp now that is possible first of all it should be an increasing ap so obviously option c is eliminated because uh, in that case r minus q and q minus p would be negative okay so it should be an increasing ap and let's check for the first option so you, you, you don't have to waste time in making equations here no need of using any ap gp rules okay just go for the first option and notice 1 2 3 are in ap uh, and the difference of these two is 1 difference of these two is 1 and difference of 1 uh, is 1 so 1 1 1 is gp 
perfectly fine so the answer is definitely a 1 2 3 all right uh, let's look at the next one if log of base 25 5 is a and log of base 25 15 is b what are the value of log of base 25 27 wonderful question definitely you should attempt in the first round obvious reasons because the base is 25 now keep in mind log is basically an output log basically is an output as i've mentioned in my previous video it's an output of an index it gives you the index of anything okay so for example if i have to have log of 8 to the base 2 it will give me an index of 2 when it's when it's 8 so it's 3 so basically indices are uh, indices basically are added and numbers are multiplied so i'll have to adjust for a and b in such a manner that i get 27 by using 5 and 15 okay one way of going about it uh, because the options are manipulated here okay one way of going about it is like just divide 15 by 3 15 by 5 you get 3 and cube it you get 27 so it can be less than like 3 into b minus a should be the answer but that's not there in the options so let's look at it some other way okay another way of doing this is can be it can be 15 into 5 divided by 25 that gives you 3 again all right and then raise it to 3 so basically what i've done is i've uh, i've multiplied 15 5 which means i've added a and b all right and i've divided by 25 25 in base 25 will be obviously 1 so a minus b my, uh, a plus b minus 1 and raised it to 3 raising it to 3 in logarithms will be multiplying by 3 so that's the answer option c so these questions definitely the concept based questions very simple questions fifth one i won't even touch sixth one i won't read seventh one i won't read 8th one I won't read in the first round, 9th same, 10th same, 11th, I just hunt for one liners and this is one of them. X, Y, Z is 90, length of the arc is 10 pi, now length of the arc all of you know is 2 pi r and 90 is 1 fourth of 2 pi r and that is 10 pi. So I can cancel pi, I can cancel this, I get r is 20, once I get r is 20 I want to find the area of sector that is again 1 fourth pi r square, that is pi into r square 20, 20. that gives you uh, a simple one, okay, 520 that is 100 pi, okay that's the answer 100 pi cool let's go ahead uh, right circular cylinder again simple one straightforward one liner will definitely solve so by far we've solved somewhere around four questions and we are three minutes down all right if right circular cylinders height 14 is inscribed in a sphere of radius 8 now there is sphere of radius 8 don't worry don't draw three, three dimension spheres they're not required precisely when something is inscribed it's going to be a 2d because unless a 2d is inscribed 3d can't be inscribed all right so so it's a 2d for sure all right so it's like a it's like a right circular cylinder which this is a rectangle now the radius of this we know the height of this is 14 so this much is 14 the entire height no sorry this much is 14 the height of cylinder is 14 this much is 14 so now they say sphere of radius so this is going to be 8 this is going to be 7 this will find out root 15 because 8 square minus 7 square consecutive number squares when subtracted will ultimately give you the addition of those two numbers that is 15 all right uh, so root 15 is going to be your radius for the cylinder and you want to find the volume that's going to be pi r squared so i'll say pi r r is root 15 square is going to be 15 square h h is 14 so i can cancel this 14 with this and 15 into 44 is 660 and that's the answer 660 so a definite solve in the first round 15 16 17 18 big questions i won't touch 17 19 20 21 22, that's it. So this is like the first round. In first round, we could successfully solve around five questions. The cutoff, as I mentioned, is seven, and the time we've consumed is four and a half, five minutes approximately. Now, if you notice in IFT, this section, okay, you could have easily taken around. I mean, estimated time allocated should be around 30 to 35 minutes, okay. And in five minutes, if we can solve five questions, which means just two to three more to go, and you have 25 minutes left. So now you think back, always keep in mind, think back. Now when you solve five questions, I took five minutes. So now what I do usually when I write any exam or any mock for that matter, when I, what I do usually is I say I'm five minutes down, which means I'm, let's say I'm taking 30 minutes. So 25 minutes more to go. So now I'll say, okay, fine. Now look, 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 at the comf look at the comfort zone I have, uh, 25 by three. So I have approximately eight minutes to solve a question. So I can read, reread, 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 -re 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 and solve the question. I can fret sleep in between while solving the question. So, <coughs> 8 minutes per question. And let's say just in case I solve one question out of these three that I want to solve, my estimate, my target is, let's say I'm, I'm, my accuracy is 80%. So let's say I'm solving four, five questions, let's say. So I'll take five minutes per question. And just in case if I can solve <coughs> these five questions, out of these five, I've solved one of them in less than five minutes. I'll add on the time to the next question. So let's take an example what I'm exactly trying to say. Okay, so let's let's start the round two. So in round one, we solve five. I'm assuming my accuracy 80% and I'm going to solve 10 for the same reason because even if I get eight correct and two incorrect, I'm still safe. I'm kind of like get, getting some decent marks. All right, so let's look at this. 
or maybe you can go 11 if you think accuracy but i don't think so after like solving the first round your accuracy will uh, be affected because once you are five questions ahead of things then you are at a confidence high anyway all right so now let's look at it. let's let's read the first question okay just for fun uh, internal evaluation based on four scores rahul has scored 70 90 and 80 in the first three in the fourth quiz is 10 to try true or false type questions each carrying 10 marks so basically 100 mark paper what are the probability that the average is more than 80 all right now the average already is 80 because 70 90 80 is 80 which means in the last test if he gets 80 marks see in the last test he'll always get multiples of 10 marks he can't get uh, anything but multiples of 10 because there are 10 questions carrying 10 marks each so he, if he gets 80 marks the uh, the average will be exactly 80 but we want more than 80 which means you should get either 90 marks or 100 mark in the last okay now in the last is the true or false which means there are two options so you have two raised to 10 as your sample because you either select true or false so for the first question you have two possibilities second you have two etc etc all right now either i want to go all nine correct or all correct how do i do nine correct and there are 10 questions out of which i select nine so 10 c9 and how do i do all correct 10 c10 yeah what is 10 c9 10 c1 10 this is 10 c1 that is 10 and 10 c0 10 c10 is 10 c0 which is 1 10 plus 1 is 11 so it's 11 by 1024 now see i could solve this question in around one and a half minutes so now i was supposed to give 5 minutes to this but now i could solve it in one and a half minutes which means for the next question i have 3 minutes 30 seconds more which means i have technically eight and a half minutes for the next question okay so i can definitely like in fact you know type it down if i want to all right so let's have a look at this uh, fifth question let's see during the essay writing mba admission process a repeated b school each contains 10 students one of the groups two are batchmates from the same iit department all right so two are the two are batchmates assuming they sit in a row find the number of no two batchmates sitting together fine so simple straightforward concept question gap method so there are eight students that are not batchmates so we'll place them first 5 6 7 8 and then we have gaps 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 right so we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 gaps right the eight students can be placed in whatever way they want in the nine gaps you got to place two so it's going to be 9p2 okay do a little bit of calculation here and i think that's not a worry at all all right so you can say eight fact by i mean it will be eight fact into nine fact by seven fact all right so you can then cancel the seven fact and into eight and if you know nine fact multiply that by eight okay and that should be great all right let's go ahead so if we go ahead again these questions i am not reading in the second round because i usually recommend two rounds but i solve it in as many rounds as i can because the idea here is not about rounds the idea is about solving the questions okay solving them as quickly and as smartly as possible all right Uh, let's have a look at this a tank is connected to both inlet and outlet pipes yeah i i like time and work so i'll do it individually inlet can take 7 outlet can take 5 so inlets is 7 outlet is 5 which means definitely the tank cannot be filled if only these two are there because outlet is faster than the inlet uh if all the pipes are kept open how many are there it takes 7 hours completely to fill the empty tank total number of pipes is 11 so i'll do it here so total number of pipes we have is 11 so let's say there are some 7s and some 5s which is 11 total 35 is going to be the lcm for the 7th is going to be 5 each for the 5s is going to be minus 7 each all right now it takes it takes exactly it takes exactly the question reads it takes exactly 7 hours all right it can fill the tank exactly in 7 hours so in 7 hours 7 hours means this will be divided by this will be divided by 5 yeah 35 by 5 which will give you 7 which means eventually the plus 5s and minus 7s must add to 5 right so coming back to the question uh, the question says again 7 hours for a completely filled in tank to empty which means basically you have to empty the entire thing which means it should be negative 5 so multiple of 7 minus multiple of 5 must be 5 which is 35 and uh, 30 that gives you x is 5 and y is 6 which means you have 6 inlet pipes and 7 outlet pipes right so going back to the uh, eight, so eighth question is basically 6 inlet pipes done All right this is how you supposed to exactly take a question okay you probably reread and try and then go ahead and solve it all right let's look at the ninth question certain village 22% of the family owns agricultural 18 phone own owns a mobile phone 1600 own both 68% neither okay how many families in the village all right very simple question okay this is a sitter actually it's like a venn diagram this can be solved by the excess method now how many are outside outside are 68% 68% outside which means how many are inside inside will be 32% all 
but if you notice inside is actually 18 plus 22 which means 18 plus 22 is 40 percent so which means these three including i mean addition of these three must be 32 but addition of this circle and this circle is given to you 40 which means the excess is 8 so 8 percent must be inside and that 8 percent is given to you as 1600 so if 8 percent is 1600 one percent is going to be 200 and 100 percent is going to be 20,000 that's the answer again i took like around a minute for this right so yeah go, I, I'm, I'm sure you're getting the point here all right next in a board meeting of fmcg everybody shakes hands with everybody else total number of handshakes 78 handshakes basically nc2 because any two things participate handshakes beat a match beat anything it's going to be nc2 because you ha you shake hand with me and is 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 not separately counted than you sh uh, i shaking hand with you the same thing yeah so nc2 nc2 is 78 and that's precisely a 13 13 c2 is 13 12 by 2 13 6 is 78 right 11th i won't read in, in the in second round too 13th i won't read 14th I won't, 15th 14th we've done 15th i won't read 16th i won't read 17th uh, it's a good enough but uh, it's more of percentage efficiency so i'll leave it for a while all right let's look at the 18th one two alloys p and q made up of silver gold and copper uh, sorry silver copper and aluminum P contains 45% silver and rest aluminum. So around P is 45 silver and the rest is aluminum. 55 so silver is aluminum. All right. And uh, Q contains 30 silver, 35 copper. So Q has copper, 35. And uh, the rest is aluminum. The rest is 35. That is aluminum. They are mixed in the ratio 1 is to 4.5. All right. This is very simple because both of them had 200. So 1 is to 4.5 can be as good as 2 into 9. And you want to find out what is the approximate percent of silver and copper in the new. So silver in the new will be, uh, basically it will be 25, 45 into 2, 90. 90 plus thir uh, 13 to 9, 270. 90 plus 270 is going to be 360. Alright, so yeah, so 315. Three, uh, so now, but, but then 360 and 315, we've assumed, okay, by the way, I'll explain this to you what exactly I did. I assumed this to be 100 each. So I took 200 of this metal and 900 of this alloy. So basically, I now have 1100. So this is going to be divided by 11, and that's going to be the percentage. 36 by 11 is approximately 3.3, 33%, and that is 29%. That's the answer, 33 and 29. All right, we move ahead again, and 20th, 21st, we won't touch again. 22nd, we won't touch. So I think we've solved roughly around 10 questions. We've solved them accurately, and we've taken exactly a little bit of time. For the first round, we took 3 minutes, 30 seconds. And for the next round, we took around 10 minutes. All right. So that's going to be 15 minutes. Now we can spend more time and solve a few questions that you think you can and go ahead trying this. But that's how this is supposed to be done. And you could have easily cleared the cutoff for the particular section yesterday in IFT. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, I'll keep updating more videos before CAT about strategy of the entire mock and how do you exactly go about the whole mock in a sitting and the other areas like LRDI and uh, verbal too. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good time.